Good evening, good evening, good evening. Um, I'm not quite sure, Andy. Are we in the dream? I don't know, Davy. I haven't I got my thing to test. Are we in the dream? I don't know if we're in the dream or not. Davey. Get out. I don't know, Davy. Davy. Hang on, hang on. Let me just. I've got a test. I've got a test. Hang on. There's no vodka in it. We're in the dream. We're still in the dream. Run the titles. We need to get out. Ah! So here we are. It is Monday, the 16th of March, 2015, and you are watching Drips and Tips uh, with me and, of course, my partner in crime, Andy Abrook. How are you, man? What? I, what? I, what? What? I, We're back what? in reality now. We sorted it out. Oh man, I had a whole visual gag of drip tips and drips and tips. Dripception. Oh, we'll carry on then if you want to. No, it's fine. <laughs> the moment's gone. Hey, dude. How you doing? Not too bad. Not too bad. Hope you're all okay out there. Uh, we've got a hell of a lot that we want to cover tonight. Oh, um, probably the most chocker block drips and tips ever. Ever, yeah, yeah. I mean, There's I've quite got, a lot we want to discuss. I've got here on my screen 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13 links that we're potentially going to be reporting on tonight. And You've got 13? I've got 7. Yeah, I've got 13, but then I've got other things as well that I'll be looking at too. And Chief Keith messaging me annoyingly. Stop it. Stop it. We're doing a show. Yeah. Right. Um, so, um, yeah, we do have a lot to cover tonight. Um, first up. You might remember quite a long time ago, I started doing a beginner's guide, and I covered the um, first generation stuff, and I was going to do second generation, I haven't done it yet, but I will. Um, but we've got another beginner's guide, and we want to show you a video, it's about 10 minutes long, um, so sit back, have a vape, and enjoy, it's all about drip tips. In drips and tips. In drips and tips. That was why they had the whole inception. Shh. Hi guys, um, welcome to another beginner's guide. Um, you may remember quite a while ago I started doing a beginner's guide um, and I covered the first generation, the Sigur Likes and their evolution um, into rechargeable devices and I was going to go on to do second generation devices um, but a fair amount of things got in the way so I wasn't able to do that. Um, so, But I will get to that. At some point soon, I'll do second generation, but that gets very complicated. But for the time being, something was brought to my attention by Cat, um, and it was a post that was put into UK Vapors um, by a beginner about the humble old drip tip, the unsung hero of the e cig, I think. Um, and it was the question was um, the guy who put the post up there had an EVOD. And he wanted to know if he put a few drops of liquid into the drip tip, would he get a short, sharp hit of nicotine? And of course, as we know, the answer is no. It's not going to happen um, because that's not what it's for. So why is it called a drip tip? Um, T 
to get to that answer, we have to go back to the beginning. Well, I say beginning, from when I was a vapor. But that particular question actually hit home to me, because when I first started using second generation um, with the Ego and C4, I would go into forums and Facebook pages and ask, uh, see people talking, oh, I've just got a new drip tip, look at this, this is fantastic, it works brilliantly. And so I asked the question, it might sound stupid, but what is a drip tip? And they'd say, well, you put a few drips through the middle, and then you can have a vape, and try different flavours out. So I thought, oh, I'll try that with the CE4. Not a good idea, because it was nasty. So I put the question back in there saying, right, I've just done that on my CE4. It hasn't worked. It's not very nice. And it came back saying, no, 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 you need a dripper to do it. So I thought, okay, what, what's a dripper? I didn't know that. I was a beginner at the time. So let's go back in time. Now, I don't know if you guys remember this, but way back when, this is when I first started. So before then, I don't know what went on properly. But when I first started, you had these things. I don't know if you remember them. Uh, a little carto. This has never been used. And it's simply just the heating element at the bottom inside there. And you had a little rubber bung at the top that you had to prise out with a pencil that I haven't got to handy or a screwdriver or something. And you prise that out and you fill up the foam inside down the sides, I remember, never down the middle, because if it went down the middle, it comes straight out at the bottom, and that was never good. So always down the sides, then you put your rubber bung back on top, leave it for a couple of minutes to let the juice soak in, put it on your device, and have a vape. Now, more often than not, once the liquid got a bit hot, it would either spit out the top, and you'd get it in your mouth, or it would come out the sides, and you'd get it round your lips, or start dribbling down the sides and next time you had a vape you got it on your lips again and it didn't taste very nice. So there were those. And there was also these little dripping atomizers. And these were you directly dripped your liquid straight onto the heating element which is right in the middle there, I don't know if you can see it. Um, drip that on there. Again they had the rubber bung in top and again, the same thing would happen. So you get liquid in your mouth, or on your lips, or dribbling down the side. So, some bright spark came up with the drip tip. And it has two functions. First of all, with the good old Carto, when you take the rubber bung off, you put a 510 drip tip in there. Now generally, a drip tip will be a 510 connection. With something like a C4, they're not 510, they screw in. Um, they're completely different. So generally, with the atomizers and tanks and stuff that you buy nowadays, they have a 510 drip tip. Now what this does is, when you put that in there, instead of having the rubber bung there, you put your drip tip in, and instead of the juice spitting out when it's getting hot, it collects within the well at the bottom and then you just get the vapour coming out of the top. So that worked with the Carto. So then we tried it with the dripping atomizer, and again pops in the top there like that and because this is a dripping atomizer and not a Carto that you have to fill up, oh, just drop everything, it's not a carto that you have to fill up, it's a dripping atomizer. You can just drip your liquid down the top, straight onto the um, heating element, and then you can have a vape. So two, three, four drops, that's about it. Have a vape, put it down, and once you start tasting a little burning sensation, then put a few more drops in. And that is why it's called a drip tip. Now, there are many different types of drip tips that you can get. You can get plastic ones, you can get metal ones, you can get custom made ones, acrylic ones, um, our own Gary Dibley makes his own. Um, you can get thin ones, long ones, 
narrow ones, uh, fat ones, all sorts of innuendos that we could bring out here, but they all have their purpose. Um, but essentially, nowadays what a drip tip is, is a mouthpiece. But they're still called drip tips because that's what we called them to start with. And it's just stuck. But it is essentially a mouthpiece. However, the drip tip is kind of making a comeback as a drip tip. Because of cloud chasing. So, as a general rule of thumb, the narrower the mouthpiece, or drip tip, then the more flavour you'll get coming through. Whereas the wider the drip tip, the more vapour you'll get coming through. And for cloud chasers, they're using wider and wider uh, mouthpieces to get more clouds. So, for example, I'll show you on this. This is the um, Clouper T5. I've got the Atlantis on top, and this is the wide drip tip on here. I'll show you. So, as you can see, plenty of clouds. There's some flavour coming through there, but it's, there's not much flavour, but it, it's quite good. So that's the wide one. Now I'll get the long narrow one. Just slot straight in the top. And as you can see, there's still a lot of vapour. But not as much as before but the flavour is a lot more intense, so that comes through a lot better. But, yes, the drip tip nowadays is making somewhat of a comeback. Um, why drip tips for cloud chasing? And they are used for dripping, so they are actually drip tips, because what you would do is you'd get a device, um, I don't actually have a proper big cloud chasing dripper, but you'd get something like, um, I don't know, the Tesla, something like that. Um, and you get your coils made, get your wicks made, and you can just literally drip down the top and then cloud chase and do the cloud chasing competitions that are all the, the rage at the moment. Um, whatever takes your fancy, basically. Um, that is the humble origins of the drip tip and why it's called a drip tip. Um, essentially they're mouthpieces, but now they are making a comeback as a drip tip. And there you go, that's it. Um, I hope that's been helpful. I know most of you who are watching this will already know this, but um, if you know someone who doesn't know all this, then please let them know. Um, I'll be back soon with some more VT, and I will promise it will be second generation stuff. Like I said, it's complicated, so it's going to be long and cut into different parts. But there you go. Thank you very much for watching. I hope it's been informative. And back to me and Andy. See you later. Bye. Ooh, get you. You know all about drip tips. Yeah, man. Yeah, well, but I forgot to mention. Do you remember these little cartridge things, the plastic things? <clears throat> Those oh ones? Oh, God, yeah, the old yeah. The old Tornado T things. Yeah, I never actually used one. They came with a Vision Eternity as well, and I've got one here, and I've I, never I, been used. I, I used one once, and I threw it at my cousin for giving me such tat. But, <laughs> to be fair, I have pretty much... I went straight from the likes of the CE5 to the um, Vision Vivinova, and then I went from that to the Genesis, the Argo T2 was my first, and I used a Kraken. And now, um, because I knew this was going to be happening, I've got a whole plethora of drippers here. Oh, I've got the Mutation X V3, the Tugboat 1 and 2, the Stellaire, I have the Little Boy and I have the Dark Horse. And the Little Boy and the Dark Horse are the ones that I want to show off. Because you mentioned big wide bore tips. Yeah. So, there you go, there in lines of difference. I mean, those are the big wide bore tips that come on the Dark Horse and the Little Boy. As opposed to a regular 510 drip tip like that, which is on top of my Doge. Um, so... 
it, it does make a difference, but the one main difference that it makes, now this is particularly dry, is I don't actually have to wrestle with caps anymore. I just go dippy, 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 tip, and uh, big tasty clouds. Yeah, see, that's where it comes in for cloud chasing, isn't it? I mean, that's what yeah. I'm trying to say there. I mean, cloud chasing they're perfect for, but if you just if you just want to have a mouth it. Uh, and you're not bothered about the clouds, you just want the flavour from the paper. The thing is with cloud chasing, it really is just surplus to excess. It's a ridiculous notion of what we can do with, it's the hobbyist aspect of uh, e-cigarette use. Yeah. And we've said it before, well no doubt, it's, no doubt say it again, a drip tip is what it is. It does what it does on your particular atomizer. I mean, you displayed the Atlantis there. Now, the original drip tip on my Atlantis is now on my Stellaire, on my Stingray, whereas I've got a Gary Dibley on my Atlantis. So I've got that on my Nautilus. I think I, this is a Gary Dibley. I hope it is, because yeah. it ain't. Like he's probably going <laughs> to ring me up tomorrow and go, oh, you did that. That's the wrong one. Um, although I do have Gary Dibley drip tips, which are excellent, by the way. Um, but yeah, I mean, even this off the shelf, pretty much except for the drip tip. Plenty tasty clouds, you know? I mean, you don't need to go into this super wide bore territory for good clouds. I mean, that's just a, a tech curve 30 with an Atlantis. And a yeah, but you do bore. get I find, I find in particular with a narrower drip tip, I get more flavor from it. And I get less flavour from wide drifting. So it all depends uh, on the kind of mood I'm in. See, now, in terms of flavour in cloud, I get particularly flavourful clouds, but I use a coil that's designed to give both. And I only use that cloud, uh, that coil at any particular time on any of my drippers. The only one it doesn't particularly work on too well is the Doge, which prefers microcoils. So, right. Now, then we're going into question another, for you, Andy. Go ahead. Sorry, right. Would you ever go back to the original Carto with the rubber bump? In the right settings, yes. Actually, question for the chat as well. Does anyone still use these things? I have some. I haven't used them in about 10 years. Well, obviously not. Well, you haven't long. been vaping that long. I know. I said obviously not that long, but I haven't used them in a long, long time. But I bought one of them DCT tanks, and I bought a whole load of Cartos for it. Yeah. Didn't get on with the tank, but the Cartos themselves, I still have somewhere in this mess I call a cave. But I've got some of those extra large cartos left and I've got one of those hole punch thingies. Yeah. So you put it in the tank and it'll automatically soak up and it never worked. Not once did it work. The thing is with cartos, they have a place still as far as I'm concerned because they're great for flavour testing. Absolutely amazing for flavour testing because all you get is flavour. At least in the cartos that I'm using, which are Bose. Yeah. But uh, and as has been said in our personal chat here, to the side, uh, I'm, pr I'm presuming in reference to the dark horse and the little boy, um, that's not a drip tip; it's an exhaust pipe, pretty much. Yeah. I don't know if you'll be able to see that, but if I just fire that. <laughs> <laughs> it is a beast. I must admit, they are beastly. Um, I love my little boy. I really should have chosen my words better. Yeah, that's, that's another problem with some of the names of these uh, these devices coming out at the moment. You yeah, have I mean, to be a little bit careful. Look, look at the Doge, right? Somebody reads it as dog, you know. So uh, what are you chuffing on today? Yeah, I'm sucking off a dog. <laughs> I'm not even going to entertain that gag. No, with the no. Other one. no. Yeah, <laughs> you know? we'll leave the other one that you mentioned before, right? Out the window, yeah, it's gone, man. But yeah. I, I may have just ordered a mod called a little man, so again, let's stop there. <laughs> let's leave that one there, right? <laughs> At this point, I think it would take, it would take a lot of that, and then when we come back, we'll come back with some more serious news. <laughs> back in a tick.
Joytech UK are proud sponsors of VapeTrails.tv. Often imitated, never duplicated. Award-winning service and products from cloud9vaping.co.uk. Vapors, do you love discovering new e-liquids? Tell Dripper the types of flavors you like and they'll send you five gourmet juices each month. Experience new and exclusive flavors, all with a money-back guarantee and free delivery anywhere in Europe. Dripper.co.uk. Oh, we're back. Some of you are, anyway. <laughs> yeah, well, I am. Davey seems to have just vanished again. Oh, he hasn't had the same problem as last week. Down the well. Oh, we need all to go to his house and fill that bloody well up. All I said in the private chat was, Davey, mind that pig, big pig dragon behind you, and then he disappeared. He's scared to live in daylight <laughs> out of him. He, he's, he's gone, <laughs> Oh, he's I got, back! I got kicked out. No, no, it was the big pink dragon, wasn't it, Davy? Big pink dragon got me. Yeah. Mhm. Mm no, literally, it came up with a four hundred three error, and it just all went mad. So. See, told you it was four hundred three errors all day. day. Shock and terrible. Right, I'll leave you stupid then. Thank you, Sam. Thank, Thank you, Daz. Bye bye. Right. <laughs> <laughs> you didn't just break me. You broke my laptop too. Well done. I, I had broke everything. <laughs> Shall right, we, back on with it. Shall we talk about this croco shite that was passed to me over the weekend? <laughs> oh, yes, I think we should. Right, one of my many sort of sniffer people that I have and who like to sort of try and contribute content to the shows actually passed me a bit of a doozy this week. And um, Sam, I think you've got the link. If you could drop it in. To the chat, the main website link. Um, v meds. The V, v is for victory over needles. You heard it here first. V meds. The V is for victory over needles. Worldwide patents pending. The world's first nano mist. I'm sorry, but it's a freaking ego. It is it's like an MT3 alike on top of it. But what's scary is they do a version of this for kids with like a little teddy bear drip tip, which, you know, is all very quiet and cute and everything, but still not, not good, not good. No, it's stupid. However, there is good news of this, and we'll get it straight off our chest. I don't think it's going to be produced, because it was Indiegogo um, funded, <laughs> and um, that finished on October 14th last year. They wanted a quarter of a million dollars, and they raised 600 and I'm glad about this because this to me is a bit of a victory for us a lot because 
This guy is going on about, imagine a world where we don't need to have heavy drugs to breathe free. This is our lung cleansing therapy treatment, which I suppose, in a way, is has a modicum of truth to it. Yeah, in, in that respect, it's not such a bad thing. Yeah, you know. Idiot. However, and we go down and we go down and we go down. You've got the lung cleansing therapy and treatment kit, money back guaranteed, no questions asked. We are that confident. How does the lung cleansing kit work? By Dr. Surendra Mehta, who owns and runs a um, yes. old, old folks' home in India, by the way. This is but, what I wanted to ask you about, because you've looked into that part, haven't you? It's into, endorsed you know, by the doctor. It's endorsed by this particular doctor, Surendra Mehta, who is primarily involved in an old folks' home in India. I did know the place. Um, I keep going to call it Vector, but that's a planet in a video game. Um... But um, it turns out he is actually in the States now. He's much older than his LinkedIn profile would suggest. Um, and also, when I first started looking at it, the other Indian doctor that was involved in it looked so much like him, I actually thought it was one and the same person. It turns out it wasn't. I really wish I had something there. And for a second, a brief, beautiful second, I thought we did have something there. However, we didn't. And then you've got the 20 mil bowls which are 40, just shy of $40 a piece. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Right, a panic and anxiety blocker refill. And you've got the Calm Lavender Aromatherapy Vapor, which to me smacks of oil. Yeah. Which is $129. Yeah. It's, it, it's all a bit much, isn't it, really, when you look at it. You look at it and you just, it, it's an easy. Hmm. It's an easy with it different... Is liquids to put in it. It's, it is literally just, I and mean, he even says in the, um, there's a link to where you can, what's his name now, Ike Bonoon? I was yeah. calling him Ike Baboon last night for some reason, but um, he his specialist area is, um, which leads us next uh, neatly into the final part of tonight's show, uh, if we got time to squeeze it in, paint. His thing is paint, yeah. right? Yeah. He makes paint. <laughs> You know, this is this is how he's made his money. He makes paint. Satin finishes apparently are his invention and patent. Um. So, oh dear God! Uh, the thing now, have you seen me. what's been said in the next in the chat? Yeah, I haven't actually. No, I've been looking. At um, F me. They have an erectile dysfunction juice. Ooh, Viagra in a vape. I get my money back on that one. I bet that would make the world stand up and pay attention. <laughs> they get the funding for that, that's for sure. Hell yeah, I'd buy that <laughs> for a dollar. <laughs> but joking aside... Well, you need it. Come on, no. No, I'm just... Oh, fuck. I tried making a funny... Just, you, you can tell you're on medication tonight. Aye. Bless me, he fell over earlier, his little finger. Yeah. Uh, but no, the thing that gets me about this, I mean, it's just basically an e cig, isn't it? It's an ego. It is basically an e cig. It is an ego. It's what looks like an MT3 style type of atomizer on the top. And it also smacks of one of the other links I've got up here somewhere the Vapor Diet. The Vapor Diet. <laughs> New oh, exciting way to lose <laughs> weight faster. <laughs> yeah. Oh. oh. Now, I'm not going to bag on the diet bit too much because I've said it before and I'll say it again. I do actually know somebody who has used a zero nick um, ego kit to help her lose weight. But she was she came into it with her other half who used e-cigarettes um, e for the right reasons to stop combusting tobacco but still enjoy the uh, recreational consumption of nicotine. A very good friend of mine, Wallace, and his other half, uh, Michelle. So, hey, guys. She's a little plug there on BTTV. Don't say I'm doing nothing for you. But she bought it from a reputable vendor of which Wallace oversaw what she was buying and, and then consulted with me because he wasn't overly um, knowledgeable at the time. He's a very knowledgeable now. And it did help her lose weight. However, this is these are being marketed as a lung cleansing therapy and this is a way to lose weight. As, you know, This is calorie control. And if you scroll down on the vapor diet thing, you've even got a menu. Hard oh, boiled egg, egg, bacon yeah. vapor, waffle vapor. <laughs> now, if any of you in China or anyone has tried bacon vapor, oh, it is not good. 
<laughs> not, it, it won't make you lose weight. It will make you go out and buy a pack of bacon and have a bacon sandwich. <laughs> or it will, okay, yeah. it will help you lose weight on the bulimia diet because yeah, yeah, it's nice just brought it. back horrible yeah. memories of when you sent me that bacon flavour. Yeah, <laughs> that was funny. The lunch is oh, even better. You can have a salad, grilled meal. Is it meal or meat? Meat. Pizza vapor. Meat. I've had a pizza vape. It's not good. Pizza vape is never good. You know, jelly uh, bean vapor. <laughs> jelly bear vapor, isn't it? Is that is gummy it, bear? No, no, no. no. Yeah. It's jelly bear vapor, yes. Um, Phil Green salad with chicken, more pizza, and banana split. The only two that make any particular sense there would be the jelly bear and the banana splitter vapor. Yeah. But, you know, again, it's been missold. Very, very it missold. Is. And we're so, we, a lot of us will be sat here going, well, why do they want to regulate this shit? And this this is a good reason why. So as soon as we, I'm glad the VMEDs never made their funding. It's so drastically shy of it as well. I mean, 600, I mean, they needed, what, 190,000 dollars or what my math isn't great apparently well I've been accused that I can't came but anyway um we got a comment monster Rob I know someone on Facebook that did the same to lose weight as well as a couple of others that are diabetic as well so they can have sweet stuff in their lives however monster Rob the question is did they do it the same way that my friend Michelle did it went to an existing vapor asked the best advice rather than being buying from places like oh no that's a different link vapor diet and Victory over needles. Let's give this stuff to kids. And this is a thing. It's all been marketed wrong. It's all. It kind of sends the whole thing in the wrong direction, doesn't it? Because we're trying to fight the cause of the vapor as a um, an alternative to smoking tobacco. These guys are trying to say, right, you can lose weight using this. You can um, cure your lungs by using this. It's. I don't know. It's a step backwards, isn't it? In well, a way. What makes me laugh even further is there's a claim, a very wild claim, on the VMED uh, website. This will replace the hypodermic needle. Yeah. How? Of course it will. Because I'm sorry, certain drugs cannot be inhaled because of um, dead. Yeah. You know, if you, I mean, I'm saying there are a fair amount of drugs that can only be delivered intravenously. Because it would cause some serious physical repercussions. You know, that's why we have such things as. Oh, yeah, I know they're not pleasant. I don't particularly like intravenous needles and hypodermics as a man who's covered in tattoos. Um, but those two needles are different. You know, the hypodermic is there to help cure me of what ails me. I'm not even going to go into tattooing needles. But, you know, a, a, a vaping pen could never. It's just ridiculous. It's utterly stupid. I mean, again, at the top of that um, that VMeds page, isn't there a picture of, yeah, use this, which is the ego thing, mm. not an asthma inhaler? Yeah, yeah. Uh, well, that's what it is. Imagine a world where we don't need heavy drugs to breathe free. This is our lung cleansing therapy and treatment. Here's here's a picture from a, of a doctor, clearly from some sort of royalty free, free thing. Uh, use this, the VMed. And it, oh, it actually has the American... Paramedic symbol on it. That's really pants. Yeah. Oh my days. Um. <laughs> God. We, we need vapes to stop me going grey, and there's various other chats and comments that I'm not going to go into because it's frankly a bit TMI. Yeah, just a touch there, I think. Yeah. But yeah, so guys, I mean, really, this is the sort of thing we should be looking out for. The sort of thing that we should be nipping in the bud. Thankfully, Victory, uh, VMeds, didn't even take off. And as far as I know, you can't order these things. I will attempt to, however, order one. I will Good luck with to. that. Um, now, if not, then clearly it's defunct, it's dead. And um, we've got nothing to worry about. But if one well, if you if you try and look around the website, a lot of it has you can't actually click on it, can you? Yeah, a lot of it you can't actually click on, and um, a lot of the people that were helping development seem a bit suspect as well. So yeah, um, I'm thinking it's dead in the water, but it's worth looking into a bit more. I will I will chase this up a little bit because 
After last night's little bit of research, I definitely smell a rat with it. Something smells a bit iffy, and I'm not talking about pizza flavored juice. You know, um, <clears throat> so one of them will most definitely look at it. And I couldn't believe the fact that this guy is worth thousands, hundreds of thousands of dollars, and he had to fund it via Indiegogo. Well, that's because he's he's probably got all that money from coming out with rubbish like this. And loads of people have signed up for things like that, and nothing's come of it. And nothing else. Who knows? That's speculation. I mean. it, 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 indeed, conjecture and speculation. But um, no, definitely, apparently the checkout is working on VMED, so. Uh, hmm. Hmm. Do, do I or don't I waste $140? Not just yet, mate. Mm. We, we, shall, we shall confer at a later date. But um, yeah. you know, this again, it's not the first time such a claim has been made. Of course, there's the vapor diet thing that we just mentioned here. I have seen another version of this from earlier last year, uh, just before the baby was born. Again, that made the rounds on Twitter and Facebook and all that, and everybody was all up in arms. And it it just strikes me as either people out there are very, very stupid and gone and done exactly what this Ike Benoon have done, which incidentally he has quit smoking. Using an e-cig, which he very proudly states on his profile. I think it was on Link LinkedIn. Um, he ha he discovered it in some country that he was staying in on holiday. I think bought one home and went. You know what? I'm going to wage war on the hypodermic needle. It's yeah. unnecessary. It yeah. really is unnecessary. And when it comes to things like diets, um, yes, I do realise that for a lot of people, the dieting is difficult. And yes, a lot of people have used uh, e-cigarettes as has been said in chat and as from my own personal experience but the, at least these people I'm assuming and uh, definitely on the one part have gone through somebody who's gone you use an e-cig right can you get it without nicotine yes you can do you think I'll be able to use it as part of my diet most likely the vapor has gone I don't know probably not the best idea because obviously if somebody comes into my store and says I don't smoke but I want an e-cigarette I'm like are you sure? Really? Mm. You know? It's it's ridiculous. Actually, look, the, just going back to that vapor diet thing mm -hmm. um, you look at that menu they put up there right? If for breakfast you just had a hard boiled egg mm -hmm. with some soldiers or soft boiled egg with soldiers for lunch you just had salad and some grilled meat you know some fish something like that and then for dinner, you just had your filled green salad with chicken. Then that in itself is a diet, is it not? You wouldn't need a pizza vapor. You wouldn't need a bacon vapor. What would you want a pizza or a bacon vapor? Yeah, you wouldn't want them anyway. <laughs> the I'm point is, if that's a great experience. breakfast, lunch, and dinner anyway. No, that's pretty decent calorie intake. And as I am on a calorie controlled diet, as a as in my particular case, it's a very large amount of calorie to offset the weight training that I'm doing at the moment, which seems to be working everywhere else except for my petrol muscles. I now seem to have saggy boobs, but still, that'll come in time. Um, what, even saggy boobs? Well, yeah, pretty much. <laughs> um, I, I feel, I look at myself in the mirror and go, yeah, that's turning up nicely, that's turning up, uh, 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 oh, chicken fillets. Ooh, yeah. chicken fillets. Like. I'll have that for tea tonight, I think. Hmm. Okay. Tangent. <laughs> Tangent, yes, definitely. <laughs> <laughs> but it's all part of the calorie controlled diet, which is, you yeah. know, also comes down to willpower. And I think the majority of most vapors do have a willpower, obviously, because they've stuck with these things rather than going in that age old thing. No, oh, thanks, you're easier in it. Yes, but also 100% more lethal. So. <sighs> There's a little glimpse inside to the ridiculousness of the world of let's find an alternative ridiculous nature for an easy that we can. I know, let's turn it into a spit gun. For those of you who are not involved in the industry of building, a spit gun is a gun that fires bolts through steel beams. Yeah. It's just plain stupidity, just it like you are really, isn't it? Yes. Yeah. And if you say that again, I'm going to come around your house and. Oh, you say that nearly every week. And I know, I know. Cars off the road, don't I? Just can't go. Yeah, oh, excuses, right, excuses. Excuse. Every night after the show, I'm like, I'll well, we'll get that date. Oh, cars bug. Yeah, whatever. Actually, All right. right now, it's not bug, but it's in Telford. My brother-in-law nicked it. 
Yeah. Well, that's just at the right. If you can, you know, it's quite yeah, easy. She's there. I could run up there, mate. I'm not. I'm here. I'm she could us. probably beat me up. You can. Ha! Ha! <laughs> oh, anyway. it's on like Donkey Kong. Oh, yeah. Oh, on really that note, should we take the second set of ads? Mm -hmm. And then mm -hmm. uh, when we come back, we've got some more stuff to talk about. See you Hate. in a couple of minutes. Vape, UK purveyor of e-cigarettes and e-liquids. Proud sponsors of Vaping Entertainment on Vapertrails TV. RY4 Radio. What's in this e-cig cloud? Harmless water vapour, right? Pretty much, yes. Compared to a lit cigarette, it's much safer than smoke. But it contains nicotine. And nicotine on its own isn't toxic and doesn't cause cancer. If you're worried about switching to vapour, here are some facts. No tar, no smoke, no burnt tobacco. Cooking your evening meal produces more toxins than are found in exhaled vapour. Tobacco smoke contains toxins at very high levels, and vapour does not. And that vapour contains 6,000 times less carcinogens than cigarette smoke. Electronic cigarette vapour. There's nothing to be frightened of. The only dangerous electronic cigarette is a banned one. Ladies and gentlemen, this is an art attack. And what does this have on it, Davy? I can't actually see. Paint. <gasps> paint. Paint. Oh, we're going the to latest, paint. The latest bane in e cigs. Okay. Um, according to the man I love to hate, Stanton mm. Bellin. Right now, <laughs> right. Careful, careful, Andy. Careful, careful. I, uh, I'm, I'm, just, I'm going to the page and I'm doing my notes and everything. Secondhand e-cig vapor can penetrate paint. What does that mean for your lungs? Oh boy, <clears throat> baby, I need a second because this is just ridiculous. You take as long as you need, Andy. Oh, right. Where do we start on this? Right. We all live in houses, yes, or flats or whatever. I'm going to presume somewhere in that house you've got paint on the walls. Okay. Got some right here. Right there. I have some. Right here. Yeah, um, right there. Pop some posters right over there and over there. In fact, I've got lots of artwork in here because I like to do painting and drawing as a hobby. 
Um, I even did it as a living once um, in terms of designing tattoos and applying them to the human body. Now, the premise of this is going into the particulate matter of uh, vapor. Now, um, now, this is interesting because it does link back into the that little thing that we have that Andy Sutton done. You know, what's in the exhale of an e-cigarette? Pretty much water vapor, right? Yes. Apparently, according to this, it's not. It's more like an aerosol gas, and the emissions consist of tiny particles that contain nicotine, glycerin, glycols, artificial flavorings, preservatives. Now, correct me if I'm wrong, Davy. Ninety odd percent of the nicotine uh, inhaled doesn't get exhaled from e cig vapor, right? Just, just you're quite right there, Andy. Right. Okay, 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 okay. I hate so, to agree with you, but you are wrong. I, I know. I hate agreeing with you too. You're still a douche. Um, glycerin and glycols. Okay, yeah, propylene glycol, vegetable glycerin. Yeah, I can go with that. All right. Artificial flavorings? Well, yes, that's because evidently we're all children and we really like sweets. Um, and preservatives, that's a new one on me. Yes, um, I know. Now, I'm sure I. Uh, sorry, yes. Right, okay. Um. Sorry, I was just reading your message in the chat, uh, Davey. In uh, the warm, humid conditions of the lungs seem to prevent these aerosol particles from evaporating. I think you'll find that's probably the, 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 the fact that we've created these things and refined them over the last, what, decade or so, give or take a few years, yeah. yep. to simulate smoking in the best possible manner that is safest for us to consume as an alternative to tobacco. Use how many times do we have to tell you this, man? This is just one of the learnings gleaned from an expert panel that convened on Thursday to discuss the latest research in vaping. The takeaway, e-cigarette emissions. Whether you, yourself, are vaping or standing next to someone in vaping, it has an immediate effect on your acute lung function. Of course it's going to have an effect on your lung function. It's going to assimilate the nicotine from the vapor into your body and do exactly what we've wanted it to do. What's but it got, what's also, it we're, we're right? inhaling something, so whether you're breathing, that's having an acute effect on you. Well, yeah, you know, so let's ban yeah. air, you know, just so we can all suffocate and die and they can live in their little glass house. But anyway, um, what's this got to do with paint? You're all asking. Well, evidently, vapor can penetrate paint. <laughs> I can't comment on that. <laughs> Nobody can. These extremely minute size of these particles actually ups their penetrative powers. It's almost written by Jeremy Clarkson. <laughs> <laughs> I can't get over how ridiculous this is. The most and lethal paint stripper in the world. E-cigarettes. So Richard Hammond is kind of good then really isn't he because evidently he's using an e-cigarette oh, yeah. so, right this is extremely money with the size of particles it actually ups their penetrative powers which is causing experts to wonder what the impacts of the tissues inside the body Stanton Glantz PhD I can't imagine for one second that's an actual re accurate representation of the man professor of medicine at the University of California oh that place um, goes on and on says the aerosol particles emitted so tiny can actually seep through the paint on painted walls if you scale that representation to size, the pores in the paint would look like something like Swiss cheese in comparison to the particle size, which might cause imminent problems. Right, Mr. Glantz, I've been using paint for the best part of my life. Okay? I've been making models. Um, I've been drawing for the past 20-odd years and painting specifically. So the past 30 years of my life, I've been using a lot of different types of paints, emulsions, gloss, acrylics, um, Various other types, uh, aliphatic, even though it adheres more to glues, but you can get some paints which have an eating sort of um, bonding, key, self keying nature to the material that you're applying it to. Now, the application of paint will have a massive um, sort of result on how it's going to represent under an electron microscope. So, if you're using a heavy bristle brush or a sable brush, it's going to have a lot of deep stroke marks, okay? Which under an electron microscope, it would look like great ravines on the planet Venus, for example. If you're using an airbrush, it would be a lot smoother and a lot more, um, well, under an electron microscope, it will look sort of lumpy, you know? 
Yeah. But even the sharpest needles in the tattooing world, which is again another application of paint in 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 essence, um, if you look at those under an electron micro, uh, microscope, they're going to be lumpy and bumpy too because we're looking at the smallest, tiniest possible things in the world. Ten years of e-cigarette use, um, for example, um, I heard it mentioned earlier that someone's reaching their sixth anniversary. Well, do you know what? That person is looking particularly healthy to me, and this links us very, 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 very neatly into the results of what Mr. Glantz seems to think is going to happen. Glantz thinks we may eventually discover more heart-related consequences associated with vaping. Exposure to the ultrafine of articles inhibits blood vessels to get larger when they need to and makes platelets sticky, which leads to more heart attacks, he says. I'm just going to stop that one there and go straight over to the good Dr. Farah Salinas. And Dr. Romagna, um, Clearstream Clinical, published. Electronic yes. cigarettes, no adverse effects on blood and oxygen supply to the heart. So, once again, Mr. Glantz, what the hell's paint got to do with it? Really grasping at straws. This is just showing the desperation. Now, Sarah, if you would like to drop both of those links in, the secondhand va effects of vapour on paint, uh, and Dr. Farsalinos' report, you can see where we've got a health professional who's actually done field work and study with a report which he isn't going to beat around the bush on, well, let's face it, Dr. Farris Venus can talk the arse end off a donkey, but God damn, you know that stuff is going to be true. And we've got somebody saying, well, if it can penetrate paint, what's it going to do to you? Dr. Farris Venus is going, <laughs> you're wrong. Yeah, well, basically, this study that Dr. Farris Venus and Dr. Romagna have done, did they take 30 smokers and 30 e-cig users? This report is very short, so I shall just read it. Okay. Electronic cigarette use does not cause immediate adverse effects on coronary circulation and oxygen supply to the heart, according to a new study presented today in the European Society of Cardiology Annual Congress in Amsterdam. Researchers at Onassis, uh, Onassis Cardiac Surgery Centre, uh, led by principal investigator Dr. Konstantinos Farasolinos, evaluated the effects of electronic cigarettes on the use of maximum mobility of the coronary arteries to supply with blood and oxygen to the heart itself. They recruited 60 participants, 30 smokers, 30 vapors. Measurement of maximal coronary blood flow was performed in smokers before and after smoking two cigarettes and on a separate day after using an electronic cigarette with 18 milligram per milli, uh, eight, well, 80 milligram nicotine juice for 15 minutes. Electronic cigarettes users, coronary circulation was evaluated before and after using the same electronic cigarette device for 15 minutes. This is the first study that has examined the effects of electronic cigarettes on use on the coronary uh, circulation, said leading researcher Dr. F. We know smoking has an immediate adverse effect, allowing the ability of the coronary arteries to deliver blood to the heart, and our purpose was to test whether electronic cigarettes use has similar effects, he added. After smoking two cigarettes, the researchers observed a 16% reduction in maximal coronary blood flow and a 19% elevation in resistance to flow. However, after electronic cigarette use, no difference, let's just put a pin in that, and big, big parentheses, no difference in coronary blood flow and resistance was observed compared to baseline measurement. The results are impressive and indicate that, unlike tobacco, electronic cigarette use does not affect the oxygenation of the heart, said Dr. Farris However, we must be cautious and make clear that this does not mean that there are no, uh, there are no implications from long-term use. It is currently impossible to evaluate the effects of long-term use, but currently available evidence strongly suggests that electronic cigarettes are by far less harmful alternatives compared to tobacco cigarettes. Right, it's just on. stop there. We'll stop there because that's a good point we have to pick up on is where something that Dr. Farsalinos is always good at is showing both points of view. He's mm -hmm. saying, right, this is the immediate research we've got. This is the data we've got. So have a look at this. We don't know the long-term effects. What your class is long-term... Sorry? Which is why I read it. Yeah, but we don't know what, the long, what would be classed as long-term. But, which is the great thing about Dr. F, is he will put both sides of the argument through. Well, it, the other good thing about the good doctor is... He's showing the data. If he finds something wrong, he will go, yeah, this is wrong. He'll put his hands up. Yeah. You know, and I believe he has found a few things, and he's admitted it. So, when it comes to credible scientific research, paint versus the good doctor... Um, I mean, we know the good doctor is harping on you know, flogging a dead horse in one respect, but at the end of the day, 
it's that ridiculousness again, that utter stupid, you know, the idiocy of the ants and what they're coming up with to make <laughs> draconian legislation and blanket bans, de facto bans happen. It can penetrate paint. Hang on a second. I'm going to literally do a direct cloud chase in exhale onto this painted wall right now. Right, let's have a look at it. Give it a rub. Anything else? Nothing. I vape in this room for very long periods of time, three days a week. I'm in here every day for at least a couple you of know, hours. The funny thing is, when, uh, in the old house, well, not the old house, the old, old house, when I used to smoke, I would smoke in the house before we had kids. And just before we left, we'd clean the walls, trying to get the nicotine off the walls, you know, until the liquid goes brown in the water and everything. The water was taking the paint off the walls. Mm -hmm. And now this house, we've moved in, we've done a bit of redecorating, mm -hmm. and we've done a bit of cleaning, and I'm using Nisi inside the house. Has any paint come off the wall? No. It's stupid. This room is undecorated from when we moved in last year. We're in literally a year, actually, this month. Um, we moved in the week before Annie was born. This room was my room, straight off the bat, you know, this is why we took the house, because we've got this little room that I can keep all this stuff separate from family life. I have been vaping constantly for at least, we'll say three hours a day, every day for the past year in this room. And I can tell you categorically now, Stanton Glance is talking out of his ass once again, because, well... <sighs> All right, yes, it was a very quick experiment, but you saw it for yourself. Every single vapor in chat is probably sat there going, the hell? Grasping yeah. at straws. Grasping at straws. And that's, that's all, all it is. Mean. That's all yeah, it is. But it also backs up, it backs up the fact that we need to be getting out to national media and putting the positive side of things. Mm, which is something we need to start working on after um, Vape Jam. Yeah, absolutely. Vape Jam's going to be a big part of it, I think. Oh, I think so, yes, definitely. Right. And um, we are rapidly running out of time. Rapidly running out of time. We're going to run over just by a few minutes because we've got some updates from Viri and Move, which I want to tag in. Thank you, um, guys over at Viri and uh, Move. Uh, right. So, obviously, Move are looking for people to endorse and officially support. That's gone up from last week to this week from 211 to 237 people, including Jacques Luzek, who is also legendary. And Viri have had a bit of a big thing, um, and as far as I'm aware, this is a bit of a VGTV exclusive. They've received their certificate of incorporation and are now a legally recognised entity. And we are going to be trying to get some people on from Viri and from Move. Absolutely. Um, to discuss what's going on, and we'll yeah. try and get regular updates for you all. Yes, well, we'll actually get them on themselves regularly, maybe once a fortnight, once a month, to give us a bit of a rundown and you know tell us in depth more than what we can from just little snippets that we get fed from their media streams. Now, of course, ladies and gentlemen, remember, it's not just us on VaporTrails.tv. There are more shows. Uh, we have, for example, tomorrow night, Marco and Gary Dibley uh, with uh, Vapor Scene and MFT. Wednesday is, of course, The Cave with Matt Gerrish. Uh, Thursday, who could forget, Top Pocket Keith and that other fellow, what's his name now? Um, There's not Hannibal from the 18th. Could be, it could be, but I thought it was some Geordie bloke. No, it could be, yeah. Um, Dave Dawn, that's his name. That's Dave. it, that's the one. Oh, apparently Dave's away. Okay. Perhaps All right, so there's no Hazer on Thursday. Is, is that whether there's no Hazer? Normally there's Hazer, but we're being told now. There will, be, there will something. be something. Right, there, there will, will be something. something. There will be something. There will be something replacing Hayes Hour this week. Of course, uh, Friday night there's no VTTV, no VTTV Saturday night. It brings us back to Sundays, which is currently up in the air at the moment with uh, Dave Kitson taking a bit of a well-earned break, I think. Um, remember, also, after us tonight, perhaps even going online now, is uh, RY4 Radio. And RY4 Radio.com. Reggie tonight. 
Random DJ uh, tomorrow. Wednesday is Nikki's juicy, Nikki's juicy bits. Thursday is DJ Bobo. Friday is locking with Tim. Saturday is Gaz's Saturday set. Sunday is me. Can't get rid of me. I'll tell you that I'm not a bad smell. Tell me about it. You came to my house and I couldn't get rid of you. Stank the place out for a week. How about you shut the hell up? <laughs> of course, on Saturday nights at 9 p.m. on MrDecivapor.co.uk, there is Saturday night shenanigans with myself, Mr. Decivapor, and the usual bunch of reprobates swearing, farting, and snuffling all the way through the week's news and events. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, I have been a fury. You have been gorgeous. He's been an empty. Say so goodbyes, Davey. Good night, Davey. Whoa. Uh, also, also, also oh. next week, on our show next week, we might have a couple of people to introduce as well. Ah, yes. Possibly. Well, that's exciting, isn't it? It is, isn't it? Mm. You shall find out more in due course. Stay tuned, because hopefully with the month I've got off coming up, I shall be doing some more video blogs like I did this morning on uh, Vape Patrol's uh, Facebook page. So take care of yourselves, guys, and each other. Remember, vape on, vape hard, and nilcom, random, est, as the big doorman himself says. Good night. Good night, folks.